can stay. You can go sit down. Go sit down. That's my girl. Lie down. Good girl. Well, welcome into Studio B, everyone, and welcome to your quick stretch break. I have Lola Lou joining me today. She's my, yes, I know I said your name. She's my first baby. And today's chair yoga practice is all about animal instincts. And we know there's a quote that I love that says, um, often, um, the individuals that we learn the most about our humanity from are not humans. They come from these little animal creatures that are in our life. So we're actually going to start, if you're in a chair, coming kind of forward in your seat and having the feet flat on the ground and then bringing the fingertips up onto the shoulders. And we're going to do some cat and <coughs> cow. So as you inhale, open the elbows wide, maybe lift the heart a little bit, lift the gaze up towards the ceiling, feel that beautiful stretch across the front of the chest, and then closing the body, the inner elbows come together and the neck comes down. And we'll just flow back and forth at your own pace. And this could be fast, it could be slow. Often one of the things we learn from our animal counterparts is they have this instinct for trusting what their body needs. They stretch when they need to stretch. They rest when they need to rest. And there's sort of no qualms about it. Let's take one or two more of these, depending on the pace that you're going. And then as you find your spine back into a neutral position, staying there, and we're gonna bring the awareness up to our hands. And we're gonna kind of draw inspiration from four different animals. So you're gonna spread your hands wide like webs. Then you'll make claws sort of at that first knuckle area, kind of clawing in. Then you'll make beaks, closing the fingers and thumbs together. And then tuck the thumbs in and bring the fingers over. We call these paws. We'll do that a few more times, so web, claw, beak, and paw. And just continue moving through those four movements. This is so good if you do a lot of typing or texting, even if you drive for longer periods of time. Let's take maybe two more rounds of this web, claw, beak, and paw. And the next time you find yourself in your paw position, roll the wrists. And sometimes I explore kind of straightening my arms. When I straighten my arms, I'll get a little bit more pull through the wrists. And if that's too much, you can soften the elbows again, bring it in a little closer to the body. And then just sort of shake the hands out. Beautifully done. Lola Lou, can you come lay down for me, please? Thank you, stay. Thank you, ma'am. So we're gonna come into our pigeon pose and we're gonna begin by extending your left leg forward, starting really gently and crossing the right ankle over that bottom left ankle. And you might already feel the right hip here and then you just stay and you sort of breathe in this position. If you want a little bit more, you could experiment with sliding that right foot up the left leg and maybe even bending the left knee and bringing it in. So you're sort of finding the degree of the stretch that really meets your body where it is today. If you still want a little bit more, you might lean forward. And just continuing to make sure, ooh, am I holding the breath or am I keeping it relaxed and easeful? You might even think this pose is named after a pigeon. The last time you saw a pigeon, they have this beautiful proud chest. So maybe you just invite the breath into your chest a little bit more openly. And if you chose to lean forward, let's guide the torso back upright. We're gonna come into eagle legs. So from one bird to another, crossing the right thigh over the left. And we're gonna take a twist with this eagle leg. So the pelvis is anchored here on our surface. We'll bring the left hand to the right knee and I'm gonna take a sweep with my right arm, sweeping it sort of up. I get this nice space in my right side body and then open and come around and find this really spacious twisting pose. And since we're doing this with the eagle legs, let's Bring in the focused energy of an eagle by actually opening the eyes here. So there's a sense of 
alertness and brightness just through the vision in this twist. And then guide the head back around straight forward and then the rest of the torso will sort of intelligently follow the head and we can uncross the right leg. And maybe just pause for a breath or two with some gratitude, like both feet are on the ground. This is feeling good. I'm so happy I'm able to be present for this practice. And then we'll do that little sequence on the second side. So we'll straighten the right leg forward, really honoring this side might be very different than the other, maybe crossing the ankle over. See how that left hip is responding. If there's some space, you might begin to gently glide it up. No forcefulness. And then there's also that invitation to bend the bottom knee. And you're just sort of meeting the edge of the body. When the body says, okay, this is where I want to be, then we pause and we respect that. And then welcoming in that energy of the proud pigeon. So that breath feeling spacious and full through the upper chest. And then we start to guide our way into our eagle twist by first lifting the torso. So really honoring these transitions as we cross the left thigh over the right. Right hand comes to that left knee. And then taking this invitation to sweep the left arm up, we get really long through the left side body and take the space with us into that twist. Remembering that for today, we're experimenting with that eagle alertness by keeping the eyes open and focused here. And I like to think all of these shapes were named after animals because humans were mindfully watching their surroundings and gaining inspiration by our animal counterparts that are often so wise. And start to rotate the head forward, unwinding the spine. Just a couple more things here today. We're gonna come into turtle pose. So both feet on the mat, we'll widen the feet. You can see mine are about the width of my chair. And then I'm gonna turn my toes out slightly. And then I bring my forearms forward. So this, this sense of coming into your shell you might feel that there's a sort of softness that comes into the belly here. If you're craving a deeper inversion practice, you could hibernate a bit deeper in your shell by dropping the arms towards the floor and rounding the spine even more. But knowing and remembering that the depth of the pose is always up to you. Let's take two more breaths in your turtle shell, enjoying this sort of hibernatory pause. And then you can use the legs as a sort of scaffolding to walk yourself out. And once I get my torso upright, I bring my feet back underneath me. We're gonna do three rounds of a breathing practice and then about a one minute rest or centering we're going to work with lion's breath. Pretty simple approach to this today. We'll inhale normally through the nose and keeping it simple as you exhale, you're going to open the mouth, stick out the tongue and let the exhale be a little bit more forceful, maybe tapping into that energy of the lion's roar. So we'll do that together. Let's inhale normally. Exhale, open the mouth, stick out the tongue. Closing the mouth twice more, inhale. Tapping into that cat-like energy. One more time, full inhalation. Really let it all out. And then closing the mouth and we'll settle in for a little cat nap rest. Maybe sliding the hips back, softening the spine. Thinking of this like animals do so well, they know when they need to rest and pause and they do it 
unapologetically. Such a beautiful reminder that we are also worthy of rest and of a pause. It doesn't need an explanation. If you notice the mind wandering these last few breaths, just remind yourself, I'm resting now. And then as you're ready, you can let the next breath become a little bit more amplified. If you close the eyes, you could reopen them. And then just thank yourself for taking this quick stretch break and maybe just expressing just a brief gratitude for all of the lessons that our animal counterparts have to teach us. Thank you, Lola, for joining us. We love you, girl. Thank you for joining Studio B. Be blessed.